society is very good at coordination. The thing is, society is good at small micro scale coordination where people are physically, you know, near each other, like small little villages. But when we start transacting across the internet, across jurisdiction, across geographical location, it becomes very hard to coordinate. And this is where the power of, of tokens can really come in. Because yeah. if we go back to what is a market, what, what are countries, what are ecosystems, it's basically just this common ground where a buyer and seller comes together and then they trade and transact. That's it. And this is coordination. So when people coming together to trade, it's, it's not that difficult. It's not science. It's just, I want something, you have something, let's come in to trade. The science part is that how do we get everyone to come to this place to trade? How do we use this technology? How do we use this platform? And this is one of the biggest benefits that token can bring, which is this incentivization tool. Because I'm an economist, right? So people only do things because they're incentivized to do so. Adam Smith said that the butcher in the shop didn't cut meat so that I'm worried that you don't have anything to eat so I'm going to chop up a cow uh, or chop up whatever animal so that you can go and eat them. The butcher doesn't do that. The butcher is incentivized to do that because he's paid to do so. So how can we translate this idea that we know people behave because of incentives and the fact that we need more coordination to create these markets for people to trade? This is where oh. network is formed. This is where value is formed. And we can use tokens to promote that coordination. And this is so important because, yes, we don't always need tokens. But why do we need tokens? Because tokens help in the coordination of market creation and value creation. Yeah, that's, that's such an excellent point. So, you know, in the, in the previous world, you could only trade. You didn't trade, you know, on a small transaction. You had to trade through centralized aggregation, right? You went to a market. There are four markets a year. They were only in select locations. If you wanted to sell your goods, you had to go to that place at that time, and there were only these limited windows, right? And why was that? That was essentially because the markets were dictated from on high. They were allowed. They were permissioned. The you know, the people who controlled the coin said, we're going to set up shop here and we're going to not only take a piece of it in the market, we're going to tell you when you can transact with anyone else. And so it limited the amount of money that flowed through a market as well as my connection with someone else or your connection with someone else because it, it had to go through these points of connection. And so what happened with the advent of the ledger based accounting was it, it broke those markets apart. So decentralization. So our token is essentially, you know, a an updated form of that sort of double entry bookkeeping that allowed us to interact. So that allows us to transact as a market, not in a centralized way, but in a decentralized way, which what does that mean to really dig into it? Well, it means we can do it more than four times a year. We can do it, you know, more than just at these appointed places. We can do it, you know, side to side. And so it allows the markets to become local and to become super small and to almost go back to that village that you're talking about where the grandma's looking over there and we can have a transaction with not only without a mediator but we can have a transaction at our time at our pace on our own terms around a contract right and so that introduces like greater degrees of freedom into a market as well as much greater access both throughout time and space geographically and that has massive benefits to markets and so that's a that's one of the things that it unlocked when a big picture it unlocked this new class of of capitalists right well how did it do that well it unlocked it because there's more money but also that decentralized nature of how money created markets was super important um, because communities are always able to create markets in a much more effective way um, you know bottom up decentralized rather than someone telling you through here here because they're always acting in their own interests right where you know you and i can have you know mutual interests and now we can incentivize one another instead of have to be incentivized from someone else so your point is a thousand percent correct like tokens are the the unlock that renaissance shaped the following 500 years right it shaped who we are today we still it was the birth of the the modern period right and that was because people could interact economically with one another without this mediated control and so that's like literally the same period we're at right now our technology instead of just led you know notebooks to keep our ledgers is a token to keep our ledger which allows us to coordinate at a more decentralized level which in turn benefits us rather than mediated individuals and if history teaches us anything will explode the value of, of markets globally absolutely i think at the end we are creating micro markets micro economies and powered by the right incentives. And this explosion will, will take off. Like, absolutely, no doubt. On that note, I am worried about two things. The first thing is that we're exploding so fast, we are growing tremendously fast, that the people lagging behind will take centuries to keep up. Because this is where compound interest really pays off, right? If you're in front, you keep up with the times, 
you'll be okay. But probably 80% of people are not keeping up with time. And that's going to be very difficult to bring them on board. We can build the best tools. Everything we talk about, tools, technology, these are, these are toolkits that we can use. If you don't know how to use them, what's the point of creating them? Like, that is very scary. And the second thing is governance. One of the biggest conversations that I think we'll start speaking about in maybe the next five to eight years is the changing narrative of governance. What we're doing over here is to distribute power to people. Everyone gets to hold power. The thing about power is that we all like power, but the, the truth about power is responsibility. We have to be responsible for all the different decisions we make. We have to, to own the consequences, good or bad. And we, we have to deal with those consequences. How do we deal with them? We can't say that it's technology's fault because everyone owns technology. It's just a protocol. Thank you so much for staying throughout this entire video. If you're interested to learn more and you want to join the community, do check out our Discord, check out our Academy, and you get to watch these videos for free as well without any ads. And also grab the book that I've talked about earlier on. The book summarizes a lot of what we're trying to build, what we're trying to design, and the different aspects that can be changed during the entire design process. We also just launched Econteric. Econteric is really economics plus esoteric because this space is so complicated and so difficult. What we want to do is to make it easier for anyone to come and learn and be part of this system. So in Econteric, we are breaking down the different analytics and different data to give you more insights, to understand the robustness from a very fundamental level of the health of this ecosystem. So check out econteric.com and I'll see you there. Bye. Bye.